Dissident unions in Nigeria are threatening nationwide practice as a response to recent fee hikes at some public universities. Now, these universities have recently announced a significant increase of at least 100% in their tuition fees. Adding to the concern, the federal government has also introduced new first-term fees for secondary school students in federal institutions. This surge in fees comes at a time when the cost of living has already risen due to increased fuel prices. Now, both students and parents have expressed deep worry about the potential impact of these fee hikes on their lives with fears of potential dropouts from school due to financial constraints. In response to the uproar, the Nigerian House of Representatives has taken action and directed the National Universities Commission to suspend the implementation of these new fees in federal universities while investigations are conducted. Additionally, the House has instructed the Federal Ministry of Education to review the new fees regime in federal government colleges and return uh, to the previous fee structure. Now, despite these developments, the issue of fees remains unresolved and the underlying funding challenges affecting tertiary education in the country persist. Today, we aim to delve into the core funding issues surrounding higher education in Nigeria. I am Kemeni Amano, and you're welcome to The Square. Joining our gathering today over the phone is Dr. Husseini Shwaibu. He's a lecturer at the Department of Mass Communication at the University of Lagos. We also have Femi Adeyeye, who is co-convener for Fund Education Coalition. Uh, gentlemen, you're welcome to the square. Thank you very much. Indeed. Uh, Doc, I want to start with you and, and tell me from a lecturer's point of view, from faculty point of view, uh, what are your thoughts about these fee increases? All right. I will speak from the, my point of view as a, a teacher and as well as a parent too because I have worked in the university and in secondary school as well. Um, it's a big shock that we are thinking of hiking these fees at this time of our national life where um, salaries have not been topped up and then we expect people to pay so much for education. Um, if you have followed the issues, you will find out that for a long time now, we have been asking for proper funding of education. Uh, we have also been saying that, okay, um, if you have to increase this fee, then it means that there should be corresponding and um, I mean, provision of facilities for you to be able to justify the increase in fees. But um, I think that it is not the right time to increase fees, especially tuition fees. There are certain things that government needs to continue to subsidize. Uh, but in, also, there are certain things that uh, government needs to be, needs to continue to fund, especially education. We have cried that education is misfunded, even in our national budget. But we should not, at this point, begin to get uh, uh, this uh, subsidized education. Education is one thing that we need to subsidize. If you want to increase fees, if you want to increase tuition fees, then you must as well increase um, salaries, as for instance, for workers, so that they can be able to have more money to pay for those um, for for educational services. But that is also not to say that some of these increases that are, they are talking about, especially for an institution like the University of Labor, you know, um, um, for some time now, the VC has been shouting that uh, she has not received any money for, for, for like electricity, for instance. And you find that, you know, you have to provide laboratory services, you have to provide um, um, light or electricity, for instance, on campus, so that classes can go on. Where do you expect her to get the money to run the university? So, I see. I, I, I'll move on to Femi briefly before I come back to you, Doc. Femi, um, I, I, I can imagine that these fee increases do, do not come to you as good news. Uh, share your thoughts with us. Hello, Femi. Can you hear us? 
I do not believe that Femi can hear us. So I'll stick with you, Doc. And Doc, I hope I still have you over the phone. Um, uh, fantastic, fantastic. So um, you, you, have, you have spoken to us both as a parent when you discussed the issue of um, you, you, you know, your kids who are, are faced now with paying higher fees. But you also tackled the issue of uh, you know, being a lecturer in the university and the need for a school like uh, Lagos, uh, University of Lagos to uh, increase its fare. So let's understand that context better. Um, how, how much increase are we seeing here and how would it help um, institutions like Lagos to deliver education? I think, you know, first of all, we must establish, like Femi tried to say earlier, that the increase is not desirable, especially at this time. You know, and the increase is even almost 400% increase on, 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 the, on what they are paying currently. And we are saying that it is so much for parents. Parents cannot be able to afford it, even though I know that compared to private institutions, what they are paying in public schools is almost like half of what or quarter of what is paid in public schools. So as a parent, I feel that the increase is so much. Even if you want to, wanted to have an increase, it's not 400% increase. You could just have perhaps minimal increase. But as you are increasing, you must, the purchasing power must be. You must top up the purchasing power and then you must provide facilities that will match the increase. That you are talking about, you know, the facilities are not there. You're asking people, for instance, to pay for lab, to pay for studios and the rest, and you don't have those kind of facilities in place. So, what are they paying for? You know, you're asking uh, others in secondary school to pay for more, more uh, to pay a utility fee of 20,000 naira or so, and then pay more in terms of boarding fee. And if you go to our schools, uh, especially secondary schools, you have people cramped. A hotel, you have the hotel facilities are not adequate, and so on. So the increase is so much, and if you have to increase, then you must there must be corresponding a provision of facilities, and then there must be you must provide money for the you must top up their salaries so that they can be able to pay. I mean, parents are struggling to even pay what is on ground now, and then now you want them to look for four hundred percent more to pay. It's not it's not desirable at all. It's not what we want at this time, especially with this subsidy remover, you know. It's not what we want. And people are even finding it difficult to send their words back to school when school resumes. And then now you are putting a burden on them to pay additional fees for schooling. No, it's not something that we should contemplate. There should be more funds. The government should fund education more than remove, than uh, say they won't subsidize education again. Because education now is for the common man. You know, so if you if you if you if you add more money to it, then the common man will not have a place where indeed put it that Indeed, Doc, if you can hear me, uh, I, I just want to say that you you have established the point that the timing is wrong given the economic uh, uh, situation or the cost of living in uh, Nigeria at the moment. But I do want us to look at the issue dispassionately and figure out whether or not tuition free. Um, university or higher education has been a realistic policy for Nigeria and the way forward. So I'm happy you talked about gov government funding. I'll take you up on that a little later, but let's try Femi again. Uh, Femi, uh, can you hear us now, Femi? Yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. I, I, I was just saying earlier that I can imagine that fee increases uh, for, uh, you know, fund education coalition it's not coming at good as good news, but put your thoughts into words for us. All right. Uh, uh, I think I heard you to a reasonable point, and um, you were trying to ask uh, that this uh, fee increment is not coming as a good news. Yes, it is not, uh, but it is not shocking uh, because I could remember during the ASU strike, I was in the studio, no studio, and I made those points very clear that what government as a plan is to make sure that they completely add off public education. They do not want to fund it. They want to defund it and to make sure that they just open it up to you know private individuals, just like they've been doing with other you know sectors of our economy. Um, 
Constitution is not a business. Yes. Now we say this because we understand it the way it should be, you know, understood. Education is not a commercial entity. It is actually a social investment in which government must show responsibility. Government must fund education, must fund the education of its citizens if it wants a society that you know that is that, that develops. So you cannot sit back and then say, Oh, we are not going to fund education. So what, because if you look at it uh, as of today, looking at the economic realities around, you find out that this particular regime is not interested in funding anything. It is not interested in funding any social service. All this regime is uh, um, uh, concerned is to what increase the tax net, raking more money, while both tie the revenue. But when they say they can't fund education, yet they are buying, you know, SUVs, bulletproof cars, you know, of 70 billion naira senators and also of rep members have amassed 100 billion naira for themselves. But they cannot fund education. Where in the University of Lagos, Vice Chancellor is only asking for 1.2 naira deficit. So we don't just, I don't want us to sit back and then start comparing Nigeria with other countries. Why don't we compare the sufferings of Nigerians with other countries? We want to talk about the U.S. Do they have 33% unemployment rate in the U.S.? Do they have 50% youth unemployment rate in the U.S.? Is the minimum wage in the U.S. 30,000 naira? So let's do let us make those comparisons at all. Nigeria is an underdeveloped country. It is not even developing. And what you need to do, what government needs to do, is to fund education qualitatively so that it would provide the kind of manpower, the kind of human resources that would build, you know, its own, um, its, its own space. Just like they've done in China, they've done even in the U.S., the question of capitalism. So it is not coming to us as a shock. We prepared for this, and that was why we came up with the Fund Education Coalition. And if the government would be humble enough, they can reach out to us and we'll show them the template of how to fund education properly without putting the burden of that fund. Femi, that, Femi, that's, what, Femi that's what I want us to discuss. Um, one would think that year, for every fiscal year, there are budgetary allocations for the education sector. Um, to, to, to deal with things like tuition, to deal with things like subsidizing education, uh, you know, at, at, at the many levels that we have in the country. And so, and so talk to us about what the funding challenges are, what the funding gaps are uh, that exist at the moment. Yes, the funding gaps, it is actually every aspect, you know, of our university education that is not properly funded. You know, we talk about even the lecturer who is, who is speaking to you, um, his salaries of eight months are still being withheld. You know, our lecturers have not been without eight months of their salary. I heard that from uh, the deputy dean of student affairs, Dr. Loyede, um, yes, yesterday. So when we talk about funding, we're talking about our laboratories, we're talking about our libraries. Um, I've been in the laboratory before where the technician told us that, see, this particular experiment you're about to do would not give you the right result. Don't waste your time. Because the last time we have serviced this particular machine you want to use was in 1986. I'm saying this. This was a civil engineering laboratory. So what, what are you talking about? Microbiology laboratory, our students only see viruses in textbooks. They don't see virus, real, you know, they don't even see, and they are studying microbiology. So why, why are we just lying to ourselves that we are going through education the way it should be? You know, it should be. So funding has a lot. It is not just about paying, you know, workers' salaries on campus. No, it is about funding, you know, the, the laboratories, the library, you know, the faculty making sure that the living and the learning conditions of students, you know, is, is of standard. Is, is, we are competing with other countries, uh, you know, across the world. And Nigeria has the money. Let us stop, you know, and I see this thing every time coming from the media. Oh, there is no money. Or oh, the government cannot continue subsidizing. This was this, the media did about petrol subsidy removal. Oh, subsidy removal is, is bad. We need to just remove it. We do did all of that. And at the end of the day, they said, oh, market forces will come in and market forces will make competition to to bring the prices down and all of that. So today, till today, we are still waiting for those market forces to bring the prices down. I think they are coming from space. So let's be, let's be sincere with ourselves. These people are not serious about funding education. They want to make sure that, uh, uh, that the poor people are not educated. So their children can continue to rule over us. It is simple. It is, and if anybody thinks Otherwise, all right, all right. For me, let's have our other panelists, uh, you know, pitch in. Uh, right now, we are also joined by Ekundina Elvis, who is the Universal Deputy Senate President for the National Association 
of Nigerian uh, students, nuns. Uh, Elvis, thank you so much for your time here. You're welcome to the square. Elvis, I was, I was just checking if you could hear us, but if you can hear us, oh, you, you are on Zoom, fantastic. Now, um, Elvis, I do want to find out from you, what could the impact of the fee uh, increases be on students? Yeah, Elvis, I'm asking what the impact could be on students, uh, you know, regarding the fee increases. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, once again. Uh, as far as Nigeria students is concerned, we, we say no to the uh, increments of the uh, city. Not even at this time, when Nigerians uh, are all facing a uh, uh, hardship. You see, uh, as we speak today, uh, the issue of the school fees is uh, something that even if they want to get any amendments, the leadership of Nigerian students ought to have been carried along and uh, uh, consulted because I believe that uh, as the leaders of Nigerian students, we know the best way to handle issues like this. And uh, we, the government itself has been responsible, I guess, for the development uh, of education. But there is no proper investigation as regards that. Now, our students are not finding it difficult to even go to school from their home because of the issue of the uh, subsidy and uh, other issues that are Now, students that are finding it difficult to go to school from home, they are not saying that they want to increase their subsidy. Students, now we have students that uh, are not finding it difficult to move their subsidy. We have students who go to, uh, to work, to hold the daily for them to be able to cater for their fee. How do you not expect these students to not cater for their fee? I will, I will, I will, I will, I will believe that this act alone by the management of our school is, uh, it, will, it will do more good than harm by increasing the number of dropout students. So this is not acceptable by Nigerian students at all. Uh, Dr. Shwai, will I come back to you because you also made the funding point. So let's let's look at uh, your your institution, for instance. Uh, how well funded would you say your department is, and how does it impact your ability to deliver quality education to your students? I mean, it's not really about the department; it's about university uh, funding tertiary institution. It's not adequate. It has never been adequate. And we have been crying and saying, government needs to fund education. It's their responsibility. This is not what you, you even debate. Education is primary. It's something that government must take on completely. Presently, it's inadequate. That's why ASO has been on strike. The ASO has consistently gone on strike and has constantly negotiated with government. We have not been funding it uh, enough. It's not about department. It's not about the faculty. It's not about university. Generally, they have not funded education enough. So it is wrong at this time to now begin to uh, put so much burden on parents and also burden on the university authorities to begin to think about how they can run the school. That's why you see a lot of them coming up with the idea of asking for people to pay for certain services and the rest. Government has a responsibility to fund education. These increases are not welcome at all. We need to fund education. Education is not something that you toy with. Because it is it is what builds the society. It is what it is what you need to for the society to develop. And so they need to fund. At the moment, the, the funding is inadequate. That's why we have been calling on them and talking to them and saying, look, instead of spending so much money on certain things that does not add to the development of the nation, education should be given top priority. So after you talk about uh, security, talk about all those things. Prioritize education, fund education the way it's supposed to be funded. I earlier said that you talk about laboratory in school, in school, even in secondary school. You get my, my daughter is, 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 in, is a science student. My daughter does not even know uh, certain facilities that you have in the laboratory because those things are not there. And then you are now adding uh, things and asking them. 
we need to fund education. It's not properly, it's not adequately funded. So we need to fund education. We need to make it. We can suspend every other, uh, we can sub uh, remove subsidy in every area. Then we should not remove subsidy from education. We must fund education. So, so, so uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong. My guess is that the inadequate funding uh, from on, on the part of government is the reason we're seeing uh, uh, continued increases in fee payments uh, in, in our institutions. Um, but what I do want you to, uh, you know, focus on just a little bit for me is whether or not all of these are affecting your ability to deliver quality education at any institution at all. Again, no, institu no particular institution in mind. What, what will be your response to that? Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't quite get that. I'm asking. Um, you know, you're not getting the funding you need. There is fight back also on uh, the need for you to t for institutions to take the administrative decision uh, to increase uh, uh, fee payments uh, for for your students. I, I mean, does it have a, a snowball effect on the quality of education that is then delivered to the students? Oh, well, even presently, you will find out that it has. We have set times with that number that we are doing more than enough, even with the present lack of funding, to ensure that we deliver quality education to students. Then what we are saying is that if we have the right funding and we have the right facilities in school, it, they blame us for not turning out quality students. But we are saying that even presently, with the inadequate funding, we are still doing, like we are squeezing water, uh, water from stone to make sure that we bring out these students. So these students, so that they can come out and you know contribute qualitatively to to the growth of society. So we are saying that some of these things that you see, some of these you know, that you see, trying to raise money here to make sure that they provide quality. It is because they want to make sure that they continue to provide quality education to the students where the schools are not well funded. But what we are saying now is that we don't need to overburden parents. Presently, they are overburdened. I'm a parent too. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm scratching my head to see how I can fund, I can get my, like the non executive and stuff. Now I'm thinking of how to increase the transport allowance for my work to go to school every day. I, I was spending uh, about 20,000 naira almost weekly to send that to school when the square price got to 400 and, and something naira. Now that the square price is about 600 naira. That means that I have to add another 20,000, 40,000 a week to send her to a public school. Oh no. I think that we have to have a total review of what has been announced as increase in school. I see. I, I, I do want to move on to Femi now. Femi, we've kept you quiet for a bit, but I still want us to uh, you know, stick to the point of whether or not these fees. Uh, fee, fee increases make an argument for uh, quality education in the country. Uh, based on that, Femi, would you say that there could be some justification? Well, I think we lost Femi over the phone. I'll send the same question to Elvis. Elvis, uh, could quality education be the argument for why there is need for you know university administrations to increase fees, Elvis. Can you come again, please? I'm asking: uh, Could quality education be an argument enough for why uh, your university institutions would want to increase their fees at this time? Uh, thank, thank you very much. As uh, following the last protest that the leadership of NANS embarked on, uh, as regards the uh, ASU strike protest, we, we, we made it uh, clear to the government of the day that uh, there is need for review as regards uh, 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 the budget being allocated on education, uh, that, uh, that they should emulate that of the uh, UNESCO, which 40% of the um, of the budget is being allocated to education. 
you will agree with me that uh, most of these people in government today, most of these people in government today, they, they all enjoyed free education. And during their days, they, they were enjoying everything free. The fact that uh, we are in a different generation and uh, what they enjoyed then is uh, that we are not enjoying it now. We enjoying it is not a bad idea, but in lieu of this, we just need to consider some things. Now, looking at the price of petroleum in the country today, we, we believe and we are saying it that we see a total no to increment uh, uh, in school fees because our, our, our um, uh, the management themselves, what they complain as what they complain every day or on daily basis is that uh, there is no enough funding. There is no enough funding, and we know that the government are uh, releasing some amount of money to them. But there is no proper investigation as regards. Well, it would seem that uh, we lost uh, the connection to Elvis as well. I hope that I still have Dr. Shwaibu over uh, uh, the, the phone. And my understanding is that Femi is back on the phone. Femi, I was asking um, about whether or not there could be justification for, this, uh, for the increments in fees at the university level. But, you know, let's, let's, let's open it up and look at this comparatively. Um, when you take a place like Ghana at the university level, fees are subsidized, but they're still, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There, there, there have been increments in the past, and I believe uh, there have been one this year. And comparatively, fees are higher in Ghana than they are in Nigeria. When you pick a place like South Africa, where as of December 2017, uh, the government over there decided to make tertiary education free for poor students. We also know that this year they've had challenges with that because government was not forthcoming with, uh, with the money. When, when you look at these examples and how they have panned out, would you say that free education at the university level makes economic sense for a country like Nigeria, Femi? Yes, it does. And... Uh... And, and that's the clearest way to put it. And let me start by saying, you see, the God that is going to bless uh, Dr. Kenny is the God of the poor and the oppressed because he has said the truth the way it is. See, when we do this comparative analysis, let's be very careful. And I would also add that it seems as if all African leaders, they all belong to a particular WhatsApp group where the only thing they do is to share high full um, funding of social services. Uh, but all of them also, you can find out, are all living in luxury. Uh, they are funding their fees. They are funding the capitalist uh, rogues, both locally and internationally. They do all of those things. But when it concerns education, that is when we come up with these excuses. Oh, is it sustainable and all of that? Uh, you see, it is always sustainable. It makes economic sense to pay a senator thirteen point five million naira monthly. I did not make this figure up. The senator said it himself. She will stand it. Um, it is only sustainable to spend $400 billion, you know, on frivolities at the National Assembly. The president can go home with $8 million monthly. Sustainable. The president can appoint special advisors, special advisors to special advisors, senior special assistant to senior special assistant, driver, personal driver to personal driver. They can do all of this. It's always making economic sense. But when it concerns funding education for 1.7 million students, that is the figure in Nigeria today, just 1.7 million students, funding it, and making sure that while you're funding it, there is also um, a, a ripple effect. I mean, you are also having resources coming from this person. For example, if you fund education properly, one student of the University of Lagos can come up with a social app like Facebook, and you take, you can take taxes from that um, particular uh, media app. You can um, fund education properly, and students are developing machines that can take care of different things in the society. And you then, you know, take taxes from those things. But when it comes to 
those ones, that is when we come back and say, oh, look at what they are doing in Ghana. It just increased with that. All the things you mentioned, when the protest, the very popular piece must fall happened in South Africa. Because, because the, the economy of South Africa it wasn't favorable, it did not favor you know, the increment. So when we make this analysis, let's be careful so that we do not weaponize even our oppressors. Nigeria is the only place where the poor make excuses for the rich. Every time we do that. We are, we are making you suffer, you still make excuses for them. That, oh, this is now, it does not make economic sense. It is not sustainable. So it is always sustainable to each part from the poor and to continue to increase both petrol, electricity tariffs, um, back, everything you can increase. It, but you cannot give back to the people. And I, I think we should start making this um, argument um, very clear. And for all that education coalition, we started to suggest that we are going to resist this. Political symposia are going to come up um, online petitions, we are going to resist it. Because even at the level of the University of Lagos management, a lot of misappropriation happened during the last administration. And the present vice chancellor was in that last administration. We still have the general um, Hawaii retired. We have, we have his report right there of misappropriation of even the little funds that was coming to the University of Lagos. So these are issues. For anyone who feels that, oh, we are not making uh, I think, uh, Femi, can you hear me? I'd have us talk about the alternatives and what government should be doing that it's not doing. Um, I know we've, you know, we, we, we've glazed over that just a little bit. I want us to go deeper in a, in a moment as time allows. But let me move on to Elvis now. Elvis, you, you have also made the point, like our other panelists, that now is not the time for this to happen. When will be the right time for this to happen? What will make it the right time, Elvis? Uh, there is no reason to make it the right time. But there are times that we just have to consider some things. You see, I did think that uh, the government are paying their bursary, bursary that happens to be our rights. I did think our students are receiving their bursary, are they being the student that started receiving the loan? And uh, I did think there has been provision of a better transportation in our campuses, just as just like a palliative, because I can say it boldly anywhere that you can hardly get two vehicles among the buses in our institutions that are still in good condition. I did think all these things are being put in place, then we can now say, OK, we want to consider some things that, OK, this is the right time, that, OK, we want to consider. And even if we have to consider, we follow the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, the, uh, 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 the inflation rates, which, as at April, it was 20.4%. Now, as I'm speaking with you, it is 20, 22.1%. Uh, 0.41%, not, in, not just coming out and say that you want to increase school fees by over 100%, 400%. Where do you want them to get it from? Now, we are happy that uh, students, that uh, students and youths have access to education. And if you watch, the, 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 the issue of crimes in our community today is being reduced. But when these people are being denied, when there is deliberate wickedness and, this, and people are, are being denied of gaining or having access to education, these people will go back to the streets. And these are things that we are trying to avoid in our country. So this is not the right time, and there is no time that is the right time. But at times, we just have to consider some things. But when the time comes, I, I, the I, I... major student. The, 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 the student stakeholders, the student leaders in every state should be consulted, should be carried along before any action should be taken. Indeed. I'll quickly move on to uh, Femi now because we've lost uh, Dr. Shwaibu over the phone. Uh, Femi, we were talking about uh, alternatives uh, to funding universities and, and quite frankly, uh, for government to live up to its constitutional duty of providing quality education and, and free education at the uh, basic level. 
So what are the f funding alternatives here without imposing a burden on the people, without imposing a burden on the students, the parents, and, and just maybe widening the, uh, the number of uh, out-of-school children we already have in Nigeria? Uh, what are your thoughts about that, Femi? Hello, can you hear me? I hear you now. Okay. Okay, so the only alternative to funding of education is funding of education. And uh, we say this because we've done our part. You see, to fund education is not, uh, I don't think it's not rocket science, even down to the university um, uh, level. What government has to do is to be sincere with itself. You see, as two has gone into different conversations, and you know, we must we must thank us for what Asu has been doing all those years, which is to always hold forth on behalf of the students and workers, even when even the students don't recognize it, to say this is how you can fund education. And Asu, this we are talking about the best layer you know, of our intellectuals in, in this country. These are our lecturers. So what they've said in their report is that government, this is how to fund education. Okay, you've done your needs assessment. There was a need assessment that was actually done across our university um, through the governing councils and several committees. And they came up with their report. And what was ASU asking for? You know, it did over one trillion naira. And ASU then said, don't even pay this money once. Divide as in pay it in tranches over six years. Do you know that the government only paid 200 billion? after the first agreement, and then since that time, paid $80 billion, and they were just paying, you know, they were not fulfilling the agreement. And that was, that has always been the reason for, you know, the incessant strikes you've been saying. So if government is being sincere, the government needs to cut down the expenses. You have to cut down at this time. If you're talking about economic realities, oh, you know, we have to take in money, we need money, the Nigeria is broke, and all of that. Yet you have political office holders who are you know going to share again by the end of July. Um, I mean governors it's gonna get they're gonna get that the FAAC allocation over three trillion that's what they are gonna get. How do we monitor this money that is getting to them? You 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 get you get so there is no alternative to funding. There is no alternative to uh, the, the only thing they are trying to say is that um, we, we are we are answering off this this um, funding and uh, this should so, be so 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 what we are saying here is uh, there's no alternative other than funding. Government needs to prioritize the education sector and it also needs to monitor where the money goes and make sure it gets to the right institutions. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up with Dr. Schwaibu. Uh, Dr. Schwaibu, in the event, we know that the House of Representatives has put uh, a pin in, in, in this, but in the event this pushes forward, uh, what are we looking at as far as our higher education institutions are concerned? What could the impact be? If you could just wrap it up for me in 30 to 40 seconds. Well, if, if they insist on going ahead with, you know, implementing the increase in school fees, then you find out that we will, the number of out-of-school students will increase, even when we're talking about tertiary education. Some people cannot afford this increase, I must confess to you. So we'll find out that we are going to have more people going out of school. And then, of course, you know the implication of that, people getting into other, you know, vices and all that, and then you now begin to have a society with, people, with more uneducated people than you have educated. So I think that this has to be reviewed, and government must give education the priority that it deserves. See how that goes. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for your time here. Dr. Shoibu, Femi Adeye, Kujina Elvis, I appreciate your insights on the subject matter. We hope to pick this up again when things look whichever way they go. Thank you, gentlemen.